Hey guys, actually today I will be doing another one of those uh, virtual surgery videos. And if you want to go play them, they're called S Surgery Squad. Welcome to Surgery Squad's virtual erupted wisdom tooth extraction. So I'm Dr. Jeff, and I'll be walking you through this procedure today. Gotcha. A wisdom tooth extraction is a surgery. X-rays or radiographs are essential, low-cost diagnostic tools used to examine a tooth's roots, check the health of the bone surrounding the tooth, observe the status of developing teeth, and locate abnormalities. Let's get started. First, insert a positioner into the patient's mouth. Next, position the X-ray cylinder where indicated. With the X-ray cylinder in place, we need to get behind our radiation barrier to reduce the amount of radiation we're being exposed to and take the picture. Don't worry, a lead apron will protect our patient from any unnecessary radiation exposure. I couldn't have done it better myself. I'll have my assistant finish up the rest of the x-rays and then we'll view the resulting images. Well, everything appears to be normal with the wisdom tooth's roots. And now that all of the x-rays have been completed, we can extract our patient's wisdom tooth. The two most common wisdom teeth extractions are for an impacted wisdom tooth or an yeah. erupted wisdom tooth. Oh, Patients that goodness. have two or more wisdom teeth extracted or have impacted wisdom teeth may choose to receive a general anesthetic. When a patient has an impacted tooth removed, the procedure is referred to as a surgical extraction. Our patient today is only having one erupted wisdom tooth removed and has elected to go with a local anesthetic. To begin, you'll need to apply a topical numbing gel to the anesthetic injection site. This will help decrease any pain. Next, we can inject the local anesthetic. The patient may feel a slight pinch as the needle is inserted. Oh, goodness. After that, the area will become numb for a few hours. And now we'll give our patient a few minutes to become completely numb. Okay, come on. Great. The patient's mouth is numb, and now we can move on to removing the wisdom tooth. First, you'll need to loosen the periodontal ligament and elevate the tooth using a dental elevator. Ew, ew. Using the dental forceps, grip and rotate the tooth in a clockwise rocking motion until it's loosened and removed. Ew. Now clean the area using a surgical suction. This will allow us to check the area for it. Everything looks great, but we're not done yet. Our patient needs to slowly bite down on some gauze for a few minutes to allow the socket to properly form a clot. Since the patient is clotting properly, we can go ahead and place some fresh gauze in their mouth. When getting wisdom teeth removed, it's important to remember that everyone recovers at different speeds. The rate of your recovery depends on a number of factors, including the complexity of the extraction, your age, and your individual recovery capacity. Often, patients will opt to have their surgery on a Thursday or Friday, so they're able to return to work on the following Monday. After the surgery, the oral surgeon or dentist will provide some information tips that may help speed up your recovery. These tips may include using an ice pack on the outside of the cheek for the first 24 hours to reduce swelling, refraining from physical activity for the first few days, avoiding sodas and the use of a straw, and gently rinsing your mouth out with warm salt water to help relieve pain after the first 24 hours. 
It's also suggested that patients do not smoke for at least 24 hours after their surgery. Smoking may not only delay healing, but it will also reduce the blood supply and could introduce germs and contaminants to the surgery area. I don't give a crap. And that's a wisdom tooth extraction. You did great. If you're up to it, why not try another procedure on SurgerySquad.com? So, we're doing another one. Let's get again and start. Now, if you think, guys, if you think these are gross, then don't watch them. But watch all my other videos. And please subscribe. I know I've seen a bunch of uh, people like or watch my videos. About Hello, 30 and views. Welcome to Surgery but, you know, Squad's virtual ingrown toenail removal. I'm Dr. Jeff, and I'll be guiding you through this procedure today. An ingrown toenail happens when the edge of the toenail grows down and into the flesh of the toe. When this occurs, there is usually a moderate amount of pain, redness, and swelling around the toenail. An ingrown toenail is usually caused when extra pressure is applied to the toe due to shoes that are too tight or too loose. Improperly trimmed toenails, foot or toe deformities, injuries, and fungal issues can also be contributing factors. There are some ways to treat an ingrown toenail at home to relieve some of the pain. But remember that you should never attempt to remove an ingrown toenail yourself. If you're a diabetic and have an ingrown toenail, it is recommended that you go to the doctor immediately. Now that you understand the causes of an ingrown toenail, let's put on our gloves and remove one. Ew. Our patient is ready, so let's begin by disinfecting the toe. Now, we need to numb the toe with a local anesthetic. We'll have to inject the anesthetic in several locations around the toe. Ooh, that's gonna hurt. Ew. Great, now we'll wait a few minutes for the toe to get numb. This tastes like now that our patient's toe is numb, place the special tourniquet around the toe. This will help reduce the amount of blood coming from the wound. Once you've done that, we first carefully slide one blade of the nail anvil under the affected nail. We're going to go down the nail until we feel a little bit of resistance. Our patient's going to feel some pressure as we cut away the ingrown. Ew. Great. Take the forceps and carefully remove the ingrown nail. It's getting kind of messy in there. Let's clean up that blood. One second. See that small bit of pale yellow substance right there? Ew. It looks like the patient has a bit of infection in the toe. Firmly squeeze the edge of the toe. That toe is starting to look much better, but we're not done yet. Next, we're going to apply some phenyl acid to the wound. This will help ensure that the pro When you're done inserting the acid, I'll remove the tourniquet and we'll finish up. Finish by applying some antibiotic. Place it against the toe and wrap it in a gauze bandage. Fantastic job. Since there was some obvious infection, our patient will be sent home with a and that's how we remove an ingrown Thanks, toenail. Guys. You did Bye. a great job today. While you're here, try your hand at one of our other surgeries here at SurgerySquad.com. And guys, please, please, please remember to go subscribe to my channel. My channel is not getting subscribers at all. I'm still at zero. And I would like to see a change in that and uh, some 
another video. So thanks guys. Bye.